plant community, it's Colorful Friday time. Hello plant community, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Pam and welcome to this Colorful Friday segment. Um, today's plant that I picked to spotlight this particular segment is the Hoya Macrophala variegata. Now before I show you guys uh, this plant, let me just give you a general quick background on this plant. Um, this plant actually originates from the Austria-Asian region and this plant can trail between four to five feet tall. The leaves also can grow larger guys, ranging from four to five inches in the length. And even though I haven't had the opportunity to have this plant flower for me, it does produce beautiful clusters of pink and white. So yeah, just an overview of this plant and let me show you guys the beauty of this plant. Look at that you guys. And I know it doesn't have as much color, but in your sea of green, this particular plant will reward you with the splashes of color that you do see here and here. And I just love the red color or maroon color on the outside of the leaf. I have it on a trellis, as you can see, and it has grown these tendrils or stems for me and I've kind of wrapped it around and it's also trailing a little bit right here. Very beautiful plant um, and one of my favorite plants not only just for the color but one I'm a sucker for Hoya but look at the venation in the actual leaves. That's one of the attractions that I have for the Hoyas is just this venation and then of course come with the color and I love the thickness of the leaf itself. But look, just take a quick look. She is beautiful. So let's get into the care tips really quick. We'll start off with the temperature. Now the temperature for this plant, you guys can range between 50 um, to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, particularly no lower than 55 degrees, especially in winter time. Now the light, the lighting requirements, uh, this, lot, this plant prefers to be in bright and direct light. It can, however, you guys handle uh, short periods of direct sun. And if you give your Hoya um, that direct sunlight, um, not all the time, not throughout the day, because it can damage the leaves, but it will sun stress it where the leaf will actually turn completely like a red hue over the leaf and it's very beautiful and stunning. Um, if I'm able to find a picture of you guys, I'll put it somewhere around me. But yeah, as far as the watering, uh, this plant does like to dry out. Um, you wanna make sure that it's completely dry out. If you wanna do the index knuckle test, you can. But if you're a new plant parent and you're not 100% sure about your voyage yet or comfortable with it, I strongly encourage you to use your moisture meter because the moisture meter will help you uh, determine if the plant is completely dry through and through. Um, it needs to be thoroughly dry before you give it another good drink. Another indicator of when um, to water the uh, plant is from the leaves. And I have a small specimen that I wanted to demonstrate with you guys um, that I have not watered yet and I do know that it needs watering. So, one, the leaf is naturally thick when it is properly watered, but when it doesn't have any water, the leaves feel thin, and you can actually feel the difference. Also, the leaf is pliable. Now, if this plant was watered and the leaf is thick, I would not be able to maneuver this plant the way that I am now. So, see how I'm able to just squeeze this? This is another indicator, you guys, so you could actually test your leaf. If it was fully watered, you would not be able to maneuver it. And if you try to actually squeeze it as much as I'm doing right here with this leaf, you would risk actually snapping the leaf. 
So that's another indicator. But once again, like I said, if you're not 100% sure, I encourage you to use your moisture meter. Now, in regards to the soil, you guys, um, you want to use a well-draining soil. Um, I would recommend two parts of your regular potting soil with one part perlite. Now, speaking of the soil, for this for this plant, I've owned this plant a little over a year. And it's in its original nursery pot that I actually uh, brought it in. I have not um, changed the soil medium in this pot, um, nor have I desired to repot. And that kind of reminds me, you guys, Hoyas do not like to be repotted too quickly. So when you first bring your Hoya home, do not, I can't stress enough, do not repot it, you guys, because the root systems of a Hoya is so delicate and fine um, till they prefer to be crowded and cramped. So typically on average, um, they traditionally say that you should repot your Hoyas maybe one to every two years. Now I've owned this plant a little bit over a year. I do not plan on repotting it no time soon. If the best, I'll give it maybe another year before I even consider um, potting it. But if after a year I don't see, I don't see any form of declining. I see actually the plant is thriving. I will more than likely leave it in this pot as long as possible. Now, if you do decide after a year or two and you want to actually repot it. I recommend probably going maybe one size up, maybe two, but once again, that also depends on how extensive your root system is. So, of course, you also want to keep in mind as far as the humidity, you guys. In its natural habitat, the humidity for this plant would be um, 90%. Now, we couldn't have a 90% humidity in our homes because that would cause all types of problems um, that we don't want to introduce into our homes, especially if we have... Uh, a large collection or any plant collection for that matter. 90% is just too high in your house. You would risk the chance of possibly having mold and creating some other kind of like fungal type of situation um, with your plant. Now I'm going to touch back with the fungal situation. Um, so the average humidity in your home will be fine for this plant. Um, they say not to go um, no lower than 50%, but I don't really have a 50% humidity, at least in my plant room, I've noticed. And all of my Hoyas are pretty much in my sunroom. And I have my humidifier uh, set at 40%. And uh, they've been thriving and I haven't had any issues. So we just want to keep in mind, as long as it's the average humidity, maybe 40%, 50%, possibly 60 to 70%, Depending on those more exotic Hoyas, they may need a little bit more humidity. But then that's when we would supplement humidity outside of using a humidifier so that we won't risk damaging our plant collection. So you may want to use like a dome or if you have a, a cabinet or something like that where you can actually house your um, humidity, um, that would be great. Now I'm going to go back to the uh, fungal infection type of thing. In regards to the Hoyas, you definitely don't want the Hoya to be wet. A key sign of a fungal um, infection possibly occurring on your plant, your leaf would actually be yellow. You want to look for signs of yellowing leaf and also black spots. That will be a clear indicator, you guys, that it could be a possible fungal infection going on with your plant. In which case, we want to definitely avoid that from happening. We want to definitely make sure that this soil is not moist at any time we want to make sure that we are placing our hoya in a very bright indirect lighting situation and you want to also ensure that you have some form of circulation going on um in your area so for example for me in my uh plant room my sun room I do have a fan that sits kind of behind me that I will turn on from time to time just to circulate some air um, and that's during like even like the winter months if or whatever the case may be. Now, of course, I have a lot of windows um, when the weather breaks and it really becomes a little bit warm. Then I can let open up the windows and just let some fresh air in here. But you do need some form of circulation. And doing those three tips will avoid you from having any potential uh, fungal infections with your plants. Now, as far as toxicity, you guys, great news. This plant.
plant is not toxic um, to your furry friends and your small children, but that doesn't mean that you still have to be mindful to watch them to make sure that they don't ingest this plant. It won't kill them, but it can make them sick. Now, as far as the pests, you guys, the number one pest that's prone to this uh, plant is mealybugs. Now, mealybugs, if you haven't had a chance to see what one looks like, they look like little white, uh, fluffy, like little bugs, like clouds of like cotton, so to speak. And if you see one on your plant, um, it's best to either take an opportunity to get a, your alcohol and a Q-tip and dip your Q-tip into the alcohol solution and just wipe the mealy bug off. Now that works very well if you see maybe one or two, but if you're seeing more than one or two, then it's a possible small beginning of an infestation and that's when you really need to start whipping out um, your fungal, um, your insecticidal soap as well as using your neem oil solution on the plant. And, I, and if you are able to take your plant outside, have a hose I recommend you using a lukewarm water hose to actually spray it out on your plant that's a natural way of actually getting rid of it and then as a preventative measure then you can use um, your neem oil solution to as a prevention now I wanted to actually get into the propagation propagating this plant believe it or not is very easy um, usually when I propagate my plants I go to the water method but with my Hoyas I do use uh, the I can't even think of the name jeez <laughs> uh, what's the planting medium oh my goodness guys I'm having like a complete brain fart right now my sphagnum moss oh my god okay guys uh, so you would want to I probably get using uh, my sphagnum moss now like I said you guys I brought this plant a little over a year ago and when I first got the plant when I was unraveling it I accidentally uh, broke um, a, a leaf off of it or two leaves off of it and luckily it kind of broke where the node was um, so let me show you first guys uh, where nodes are nodes are any points where growth can emerge from so example you guys would be a node because this stem sparked out this growth of this leaf. So any place, area where you actually see the growth of leaves coming from would be considered a node. And it broke off and I was actually going to throw it in the trash, you guys, believe it or not. And I said, wait, let me just see if I'm able to propagate it and let me just see what happens. So I took the cutting or the snip and I dipped it in my rooting hormone and I put it in sphagnum moss and within a few weeks I actually started growing roots and I potted it into a small planter. I'm going to show you what it looks like now um, over a year later. Look at that. Now this leaf along with these two leaves were the leaves that was connected to the node that actually snapped off my plant. And that's all that it was in this pot. And like I said, it's been slightly over a year. And within that year's time, I was able to grow uh, five leaves. And then all of a sudden, and this happened just very recently, you guys, this tendril, the stem, just started shooting out. So it's very happy where I have it. I have it sitting on my window seal ledge in my kitchen where it's getting that beautiful um, direct morning light. And it's even a little sun stress right here. Very beautiful. So now I have another plant. Now, also too, I want to take this time to show you my other propagations with uh, this particular plant. And these propagations were not planned propagations, you guys. I'll tell you what happened. I was... And this was probably like last year sometime, I want to say maybe in December when I brought this trellis because it started really trailing long, you guys. But I wanted to see how pretty it would look. And it looks pretty good. You know, I can't wait for it to be really full because that's when it's really going to be really beautiful on this trellis. But I brought the trellis sometime in December. And 
when I was actually wrapping the stems, I snapped a long piece of it that had several leaves on it, and I was like, dang nabbit. But I used that situation as an opportunity where I actually cut it up and I propagated it using the exact same uh, method as far as the rooting hormone and the um, sphagnum moss. And I'm going to show you, hopefully I can uh, find that picture that I posted on my uh, Instagram of me actually having a propagation. So out of that fiasco, I was able to create four more additional plants. And the one being the one that I showed you earlier for the example of the watering. Now this one, it hasn't done much for me, but I do know it's well rooted in here because I can no longer pull it out of the soil. So it's definitely created its own great root system. I know this one is probably going to take a little bit longer um, than my others to actually start showing additional growth. Now sometimes when you do propagations, um, you guys, you want to do multiple ones because some of them may take and some may not. But this one, they're all taking. It's just some of them are growing a little bit faster than others. Um, and this is one of them that hasn't really taken off yet. But I want to show you one, you guys, that has actually started to take off. And this one was just this two-leaf cutting right here. And so far, it has produced these two new leaves, which is still soft. And one thing about Hoyas, you guys, when the leaves come in, they come in extremely tiny. And they be very, very red. And as it gets older, then it starts turning into less of that redness but so far it's given me and this has actually happened within a couple of weeks this past few weeks actually these two leaves and then this uh stem which is growing so it's going to probably shoot out some more which is an indicator that more leaves are about to come but isn't that just adorable and then i have another one which is similar to the first one that I showed you that's not really taken off, but it is rooted in this pot. It has it, which is these two leaves. Now this, this was something that was already originally there when I had cut it. I just never cut it off. Um, I don't think I want to. It looks like there may not be any growth right here. I'll just wait a few months, you guys, when we're really deep into the growing season. I might snip it off just, just to see if I can um, test the theory out, see if I can activate uh, growth or stimulate growth more or less for this um, particular plant. But I love the leaves. It's well rooted into the soil and I, you know, I'm just waiting for this thing to take off. Now my last one, you guys, this is one that is really successful starting to take off and I had put the most leaves in as well as the long stem. I put three leaves in here and it hasn't produced any leaves yet, but what it has done is already started providing me with this shoot right here and this little shoot right here and if let's see can't even see it but it's like a little little I say baby leaves on the sides you guys that's trying to come out you really can't see it it's so small but within a matter of weeks um, they will become of some significant size but isn't that beautiful? So I'm going to share with you guys one more. Um, one more time. The mother plant. And I don't know. Let me see if I can show you. When I had made a mention about how long. Or how long the leaves can get. See that? That's a nice size leaf. And I don't even know if you'll be able to. Yeah it's kind of hard without me risking. Pulling out the. This one right here you guys. That's a pretty long leaf and it's a pretty wide leaf. But who can deny this? I recommend anybody getting this. It's a very easy care plant, like I said. Look at that. Oh, I just love the colors. So you get that creaminess and then I love that dark green. And then who can deny that nice pinkish hue? Now this one is like a newer leaf, you guys. So it's kind of soft and that's why I'm able to move this around where I'm not really able to move this around because this plant has had a great um, a good drink but yeah you guys that pretty much sums up um, this colorful Friday segment 
let me know below if you guys actually have this plant. If you have any other plant care tips outside of the ones that I've provided you guys with, please share below so that we can grow this plant community together and learn from one another. But as I mentioned to you guys, that's it for this series. If you love foliage as much as I do and you love listening to planty things, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Please give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Any support you guys can give me for this channel, I would really appreciate it. It will help boost up my algorithm. Enjoy your day wherever you are in the world. And until next time, guys, much love. See you later.